largely thanks to civil rights movements like Afri Forum and other individuals who are serving in the international scene as ambassadors for the rights of minorities in South Africa. The message of the expropriation without compensation debate and debacle in South Africa reached the ears of the Western world and the international scene. According to the Agricultural Union, TLU South Africa, the month of May saw 46 attacks against farmers. Those attacks ended up in seven murders. That does not really reflect just the pure naked statistic, the absolute horror of what is happening in South Africa. On the 1st of June and the 2nd of June already there have been five farm attacks in South Africa. Stephen Smith and his family suffered a, a home invasion on the farm that has been in the news because of illegal land invasions. Remember the president saying there are no land grabs in South Africa? That as well is a lie. Stephen Smith is dead. The first casualty of the month of June. More fuel on the fire for us who are where we need to be to raise our voices. We dare not be quiet. There are different voices rising up in South Africa. There are different calls to action. We do not want to see more violence. Blessed are the peacemakers. But we've come to a point where there's so much complicity. There's so much duplicity. There is so much evil that is being whitewashed and so much good dragged through the mud. This is why the time is urgent for us to raise our voice to lobby. Pressure is needed, international pressure. There's a cry that is going forth and it is time for us to pay attention before people start taking the law into their own hands. That's why June is so important. The Stavrebur May Day June campaign started big and bold. A 20-minute documentary on Russian state television produced by the famous Alexander Rogatkin went across the Russian speaking world with five emissions over this past weekend on the 1st and the 2nd of June, Saturday and the Sunday. The ears of Russian speakers around the world have heard the message. We hope that their hearts have also grasped the urgency of the situation in South Africa today. This is why we are appreciating also the message that is coming forth, even from Russian state television, where they explain the history to the millions of watchers and the potential hundreds of millions of Russian speakers and with the English subtitles on these videos, exponentially more, the history of the, the Cape of Good Hope, the history of the beginnings of 1652. But they also put the emphasis on the complicity that there is when populism and political speech drives the masses to criminality. And it's an important focus to have because not many entities when it comes to mass media are speaking about what is happening truly in South Africa today. And very often one gets the response, oh, but it's your just deserves. Oh, it's karma you stole the land. This is the narrative that is being presented today, which is an absolute lie. Enough has been said from South African civil rights movements when it comes to answering this dastardly, twisted, Marxist propaganda technique of twisting history, reinterpreting it and completely giving a false picture of what happened before. Yesterday I had to take on a French commentator on a French media post and this individual also alluded to the past, a reinterpreted wrong view of the past, presenting his idea that this was the just deserve and that these Bura should just fall back to France, Germany, Holland, wherever they came from. As if those countries today are willing on a large scale, if it was the case, to receive such a exodus of Buddha Afrikaners. They are not. And neither is that the will or the desire of my people, the Buddha Afrikaners. And there where God has placed us, we are there to stay. And if 
individuals like myself are in obedience to a divine calling reaching other nations and other cultures and other languages as spokespersons as individuals who have a mandate to communicate that does not mean that we have abandoned our duty to stand together in Afrikaans we say Eendrag mag mag. there is strength in unity over the last 25 years we've been hearing the ideology of pluralism of liberalism forced down our throats the identity politics the entire also focus on reinterpreting the past on scapegoating ethnicities like my own tribe the Boer Afrikaner on blanket statement strawman arguments that are used to hamstring those who are wanting to take a stand for the truth that are used to shut the mouth of a collective groundswell of protest against this dastardly twisting of our history and of our identities this must stop